Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Where I left was about just the, these three aspects that are mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions of Fir'aun, Haman, and the Junood, which these, this, this trilateral uh, aspect of control and domination is, you can see this again and again historically, but with, the, with this new world order, also along with the military uh, aspect of the Junood or the minions or the armies, is the propaganda war that takes place. And really, the, the, in, in the Western Hemisphere, this war has been going on for a very long time to literally control the minds of human beings, to take over the thought processes of human beings. I mean, we, uh, there has been massive studies since the 1950s in uh, mind control. The Americans became very interested in mind control after the Korean War because of certain American soldiers that were uh, brainwashed during that period, and that term actually begins to arise. Brainwashed during that period, and that term actually begins to arise in um, it becomes a uh, in military jargon the idea of brainwashing individuals. Some of the American soldiers that were taken prisoner in the Korean War literally began to. Uh, propagate on the radio and broadcast to American troops communist propaganda. It turned out they had been worked on very severely by um, Russian and Chinese uh, manipulators. The Americans became very interested in this. They wanted to understand what exactly was uh, taking place and they began to study this a lot. They found certain uh, patterns in terms of brainwashing people. One of them was repetition to constantly return over again. And this is something that uh, the corporate world has taken up. The idea of jingles in advertisements and these things. Continually, this continual re repetitive nature of advertising, literally getting people to constantly... Uh, some of the American soldiers that were taken prisoner in the Korean War literally began to... Uh, propagate on the radio and broadcast to American troops, communist propaganda and these things, it turned out that they had been worked on very severely by um, Russian and Chinese uh, manipulators. The Americans became very interested in this. They wanted to understand what exactly was uh, taking place and they began to study this a lot. They found certain uh, patterns in terms of brainwashing people. One of them was repetition to constantly repeat over and over again. And this is something that uh, the corporate world has taken up. The idea of jingles in advertisements and these things. Continually, this continual re repetitive nature of advertising, literally getting people to constantly uh, be reminded through jingles, oftentimes using rhyme jingles and these type of things. Also certain images. There have been studies that have been done in terms of the, the neurological effects of viewing pornography that are very frightening. And unfortunately these have been done at major universities in the United States. I don't know about the European research. The studies that have been done in, in Stanford uh, indicate some very frightening uh, results of people that watch uh, pornography, the effects that it has not only on behavior, what they what, what is termed cognitive dissonance, and the actual attitudinal changes that take place in order for a self to maintain integrity after being exposed to this constant sensual bombardment. So this is all part of this. Now Hollywood plays a very important role in this, and we can see the the marriage uh, between the political and the uh, the the media aspects, especially in the United States. The the Politicians and the media people are, are very much entrenched in each other's business. Hollywood itself is a word, the word is interesting because it's a word that comes from a pagan uh, uh, Hollywood is the holy wood and it was the wood that the magical wands were made out of in the pagan uh, sorcery, magic. And these wands were believed that the sorcerers that possessed them could uh, put people into trances and control them. This is part of, I mean this is symbolic, but it's also important to understand that part of what Hollywood literally does is it puts people into trances. It's a dream state. They call it the dream machine in the United States. And it creates fantasies for people. It puts people into these things. Now one of the things that's interesting that in the 
part of what's done in movie theaters, in darkened uh, rooms where people watch television, is literally a, a trance state that occurs through what's called suspended state of disbelief. You enter into a state, you suspend your disbelief and enter into a, a state whereby you begin to believe what you internally realize is imagination. It's falsehood. Films are, are, are magic. It's just magic. You go and you watch these things and people get caught up in them. People cry during films. All this catharsis that takes place in these things. M many of the films, and, and this is an important element in the control mechanism, is literally allow people to go and have certain type of uh, catharsis is a purging experience, which Aristotle talks about the, the, the necessary element. One of the necessary elements of tragedy is to create this cathartic experience. And this is why a lot of the films, especially also news and things like this, this is why news is very important in this culture. Everybody watches the news, they, watch, they have this tragic cathartic experience of watching the tragedies of others and then feeling safe and complacent in their own experience of this suspended state of illusory well-being. So these are very intricate and sophisticated methods. Now I, I think it's dangerous, the, although there are elements, that there's concerted efforts that take place, there's also a lot of people that have similar world views that aren't necessarily working together in concerted efforts. But the, the corporate elite is a very small group of people. They really are. They're, it's not a large group of people. And these people definitely have very powerful agendas. And they're working towards them. And when I said that the Muslims are the wrench in the whole machine, I mean, really Islam is. The Muslims are, are in uh, the state that we, I mean, I don't need to go into detail about that. But these people recognize the potential threat of Islam. Uh, Brzezinski, who was the, uh, the uh, national security advisor to Carter during the Carter period, has written a book called Out of Control. And it's about the state of the world affairs right now, out of control. In that book he says that right now there is no, literally in the field of ideas, there is no potential uh, idea that could take on a mass movement uh, as a reinvigorating element in human societies other than Islam right now. This is what he says, that all of these other uh, philosophies and ideologies have literally fallen by the wayside and the, he said the vibrancy of Islam is still present and manifesting himself. Um, Elwood, who's a uh, comparative religions professor in UCLA, has written a book in which